Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so again, Joshua, after the death of Moses, we see a picture of uh, that the law uh, can have no more over us if we come to faith in Christ. Uh, if we come to faith in Christ, we're no longer under the law, but under grace. Now, that doesn't mean we just uh, sin, sin, sin. We uh, are no longer obligated uh, to the law. Uh, prior to Christ, they were obligated to the law. Christ hadn't come. There was no other way. Uh, so they were obligated to the law under that weight. And uh, now in this uh, dispensation of time, uh, we can come freely uh, to the to the altar. We can come freely uh, to the Father through Jesus Christ. He is the mediator, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, because he was a man. Now, the Abrahamic covenant, again, I'm going to address this again. You might be like, why do you address this? Because it's important to understand these were promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, he promised to make Abraham a great nation so that he would have multitudes of children. He it said as the sand, sands of the sea, in other words, it, countless, he said, I will bless thee and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless uh, them that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee. But he says, get to a land that I will show thee. I will make thee a great nation. He promised him a land, a nation, and he promised the seed promised to Abraham that the Messiah would come through his line. Okay, now we understand Joshua is being told that people should walk through the, the promised land. Now they're leaving the wilderness. If we're a Christian, we want to be leaving the wilderness of sin. We don't want to be wandering in the wilderness. I know for uh, parts of my life, I wandered in the wilderness. Didn't have victory in my life. Um, and... Uh, we may always struggle in our lives uh, with sin in some aspect, but hopefully we have matured and we're not struggling in some aspect of our life uh, that has a hold of us and a stronghold in our life. And we need to look to the Lord for help in those things. Um, so picking up Joshua 1.12, And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath, hath given you this land. So they understood the promise as a Jewish people that they would have the uh, promised land. Genesis 12.7, it's an unconditional promise. God's going to keep that promise. Uh, verse 7, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed. Now see, this is why it's important. Again, unto thy seed. It was promised to Abraham's physical seed, the land. It's not promised to Abraham's spiritual seed. The spiritual seed would be you and I, if you're out there listening. You're not a Jew, and you're in Christ. We're not promised that land. And that's where covenant theology goes wrong. Those that uh, buy into covenant theology and believe that um, the church has somehow replaced Israel and we can claim all the promises in the Old Testament. Many of those promises are still going to be fulfilled in the millennial reign of Christ. When Jesus comes back, he is going to fulfill those promises. The nation of Israel has never fully occupied the promised land. They will. When Jesus comes back after the rapture, after the seven-year tribulation, first will happen the rapture. The Antichrist will come on the scene. He will deceive many. Many people will take his mark, put it in their hand or in their forehead. They'll believe that he's the Messiah. So many people are looking for a political Messiah right now, both on the right and left sides of the aisles, and they want somebody who can fix everything, and a political Messiah can't do it. Only Jesus Christ can change the heart. He said, I will remove from you that heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. And we want that softened heart to the things of God. We don't want to worry about all the politics of the world. And I'm not saying that uh, we shouldn't vote our conscience uh, toward the Lord. There are certain uh, politicians I could not support. 
But I do not believe that we're going to change the world through politics. That is an impossibility. It can't be done. It won't be done. And all sides have become so corrupt in uh, political things. And people think we're going to get saved somehow that way. It's just not going to happen. So the Lord said unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. The Lord saw Abraham. Remember, Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to, me, to see my day. And they said to Jesus, You're not yet even 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham? He said, Before Abraham was, I am. And I am is the name of the burning bush that the Lord appeared in the burning bush to Moses. He's the same God that appeared to Moses. He's the same God that appeared to Abraham. And he gave us a promised seed in Jesus Christ. Anyone can take part in that part of the Abrahamic covenant. Not anyone will take part in being Abraham's physical descendants. Unto thy seed will I give this land. Not everyone can take part in being uh, part of the nation of Israel, part of the great people that he has, but anyone can be part of the spiritual seed of Israel in the seed promise of that covenant. Verse 14, your wives and your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses shall give you on this side of Jordan. Again, plural, all the people. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord have given your brethren rest as he hath given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. They're yielding to Joshua's leadership. In that, we should see we need to yield to the spiritual leadership of Christ. They're going to go into a physical battle. We go into a spiritual battle. There is a spiritual battle raging. You can read in Ephesians 6 that we need to put on the full armor of God. And the armor of God doesn't have anything that protects the back. We need to be marching forward. Okay. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of uh, righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the shoes prepared with the, gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, we need to put on all those things. Um, I missed one, I know, but I'll let you go ahead and look at look that one up. It's the, uh, I want to say belt of truth, but I don't think that's the right uh, terminology. So I don't like using the wrong terminology. Uh, but anyway, uh, verse 17, according as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever be... He be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death, only be strong and of good courage. Well, that's pretty harsh. If they don't listen to Joshua, they're saying he'll be put to death. But isn't it a harsh command? If we aren't in Christ, there is an eternity in hell. Okay. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only way to come to the God is through Jesus Christ. And without him, it is death and eternity in hell. It's eternal damnation. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let's, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, we see a physical picture in the nation of Israel of the way we should walk. We should be walking after the Spirit of God. We should be walking after Jesus Christ. They walked after Joshua. The law couldn't bring them to the promised land. Okay, Moses was a picture of the law. Even though he's a picture of Christ, he's a picture of the mediator. He kept the law for us. Moses didn't keep the law. Jesus did. But Moses couldn't bring them into the promised land. Why? The law couldn't get us there. Now, Jesus can. Joshua shows us a picture of Jesus, somebody who's going to be faithful to God's word. That's what Jesus was. 
Yes, Joshua was a sinner just like anyone else. Whenever we look in the Old Testament as a type of Christ, we can only take it so far. There's only one who is without sin, and that is Jesus Christ. Every other human being who walked the face of the earth, from Adam to Eve to, uh, to Mary, the mother of Jesus, had sin, and they needed a Savior. Romans 5, 1 through 4 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to faith in Christ, we come to Yeshua. Jehovah is salvation. We come to Jesus Christ and we have peace with God. We're no longer under the law. The law is dead to us. Much as Moses couldn't enter the promised land, the law cannot get you to heaven. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. We're going to have spiritual battles. We're going to have trials, tribulations, temptation. Those are three things promised to the Christian. In today's society, people think we're promised happy, healthy, wealthy lives. That's a false gospel. We are promised trials, temptations, tribulation. We're promised that we're going to have struggle at times. But also, there's a fourth thing we're promised, and that is eternal life. We need to look at that sometimes. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have eternal life, and that you cannot lose. And I hope you got that point yesterday. And I hope anyone out there struggling with that would reach out to me. We can have a time of prayer. We can talk through. We can talk through some scriptures that should give you assurance in your salvation. If you've put your trust in him, have all your trust in him. It's all your